All right, we're about a minute after. Rob, you want to, um, you, you okay if I go ahead and jump in and totally. get started? Okay, awesome. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I am excited to share uh, about the P4 and Concordia Technology Solutions webinar um, today and talk about the partnership and jump into our solution. Uh, just a few quick housekeeping items that I wanted to mention before we jump in. Uh, the meeting is being recorded, uh, so I'll share the link after the recording to all of the attendees today. That way you can take that back and share with your internal teams as needed uh, and revisit any of our discussion today. Uh, everybody is muted right now, um, but if you have questions throughout, you should see a Q&A chat feature at the bottom of your screen. So feel free as we go throughout the demo to post any questions you have um, in that chat feature, and we can uh, answer those as best we can as we go. Uh, and there also will be um, a Q&A time um, at the end as we wrap. Um, let me actually move forward here in my slide so we can look at the agenda. Here we go. Uh, I wanted to just jump, jump into introductions briefly before we jump into uh, the product demonstration. Uh, so the speakers today, my name is Jacqueline Kemp, and I work with Rob to help support the relationship with Paycor and CTS. Uh, I've been in business to business sales now about nine years. And I've been lucky enough to work with Paycor for about a year and a half of that. So um, I live in the Midwest, I'm in Southern Illinois. Um, I'm actually close to the St. Louis Arch, um, about 20 minutes across the river. Uh, my director here, Brett Allen, his picture is right below mine. Uh, he isn't on the webinar today, but I wanted to include him because he actually started the partnership between Paycor and Concordia Publishing House. Uh, that was probably five or six years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and Brett brings about 15 years experience in the uh, payroll HR space, uh, specifically um, very knowledgeable in the ministry space. Um, so I have a lot of expertise on my team to really help bring value to our mutual clients uh, that both Paycor and CTS work with. Um, and I'll dive more into the partnership in a few minutes. Um, but before I do, I wanted to give Rob Davidson the floor to introduce himself. Hello, hello. Uh, I have been, my name is Rob Davidson. I'm the manager of digital products here at Concordia Technology Solutions. I work with our sales teams and our marketing teams, uh, you know, very directly and our amazing support team uh, and our developers who work on both our Shepherd staff and other web-based products uh, very intimately. Uh, I've been with Concordia Publishing House, which owns Concordia Technology Solutions for about a year and a half now. And uh, it's been wonderful as I've grown in my understanding of all that Paycor does, which is why this webinar is kind of launching off kind of a bigger activity between both of our companies, uh, especially with the launch of the greatest uh, recent module uh, the kind of the revamping of that for Shepherd staff, the finance module, uh, version nine includes a uh, direct import uh, for pay core information to go into our Shepherd staff database, uh, which kind of just kind of signals, hey, we are we are here. We love pay core and everything they do for churches, and we're excited to continue to grow with them as the years develop. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and last, certainly not least, I wanted to give Megan the floor. Uh, Megan is one of our solution experts here at Paycor. Um, she's going to be leading the product demonstration today. So Megan, I'll let you share a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Team, welcome in. You are going to listen to me talk plenty today, but I am excited to give you a tour around Paycor, answer and knock out any questions you might have. So don't be shy. Use that chat feature at the bottom. Um, but I've been with Paycor for about five years now. I spent time on the client side of the house setting up a lot of different use cases. So hopefully I'm a great resource for you today as I guide you through and give you a sneak peek of what Paycor could operate like. Thanks, Megan. All right, so uh, before we jump in, I wanted to just share a little bit about Paycor at uh, high level for those who are not familiar with our organization. Um, so Paycor has over 30 years experience in the HCM space. Uh, we started out simply providing payroll services for our clients, uh, but we've expanded our portfolio of products to really meet the needs of our clients and um, the, the changing workforce. 
Um, so we really help bring value in all aspects of the employee life cycle. Uh, the fav my favorite part about this slide is right here. Um, over 50% of our customers uh, come from current clients that utilize our services, or they come from partners of ours like Concordia Publishing House, CTS. Um, so we really value those customer relationships. We really value our partner relationships like the relationships with Concordia. Um, so we want to make sure that our clients are successful. We really give you the personalized care you need to make sure that you're successful with our solution because your success equals pay for success. Uh, and then, of course, here at the bottom of the slide, you can see no shortage of awards um, that PayCorps has been recognized for. Uh, anything from um, excellence in customer service, product innovation, um, to our DE&I practices. So, again, just wanted to share some key highlights about PayCorps uh, before I jump in. And this is um, just a, a final, um, final highlights that I wanted to share with you guys before Megan jumps in. I uh, just wanted to touch on some things um, regarding the PayCorps uh, relationship with Concordia. Um, I mean, the partnership really started just because we saw a need to bring some support to our mutual clients uh, from a different angle that a lot of our payroll competitors just can't offer. Um, first of all, like I mentioned, PayCorps really understands the ministry space uh, and the complexities that your payroll can bring. Um, right now, about 25% of our businesses are made up of organizations just like yours. So we're very um, versed um, with clients like yours. Uh, we provide you with nonprofit payroll and tax specialists um, who do nothing but work in your space. Um, so we really set you up for success with our customer support. Um, in addition to the customer support side, we offer that one-on-one -on -one hands-on implementation experience for all of our Concordia accounts. So we will match you with an implementation spe specialist who, um, on the front end who does nothing but nonprofit work. Uh, they really understand your um, industry, uh, just making sure that you are set up for success for a smooth transition into our technology. Uh, the other thing, too, is that we offer preferred discounted pricing for all of our Concordia accounts uh, that a lot of our competitors just can't touch. And then finally, we offer integrations into those four or three Bs that you have set up, um, as well as the accounting software like the Shepherd staff that Rob had mentioned uh, to really help automate those pieces of the payroll for you. So again, um, I just want to pause here. Uh, Rob, I don't know if you have any other insight or any gaps you want to fill here um, before I toss it over to Megan. No, just to kind of reiterate what you said, we spent a lot of time looking at who we want to continue to create long-term partnerships with when it comes to payroll, uh, our Shepherd staff so software, the people that use it, especially the finance portion, um, they need a reliable payroll solution that they can depend on. And after looking throughout the market and seeing, hey, who's who's available to work with churches and who does it best. Um, our team chose Paycor because we felt like they fit that criteria. They fit churches and without our prompting, they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll do discounted approaches and what have you for, for your churches and customers. And I'm like this, it just represents how dedicated they are to helping churches, which is something that we saw in deep. We did not see in a deep talks with other companies. Um, so love working with Paycor. They're great people. And uh, I'm excited to see, you know, everything Paycor has to store and how it helps uh, all of our customers. Awesome. Thanks, Rob, for that. And Megan, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll toss it to you. Excellent. Thank you. All right, everybody, buckle up. We should see Good Morning Michael popping up on the screen. Let me know that we are all set there and can see that. I can see Megan. Good job. We're good. Excellent. All right. So as we navigate through today, I'm going to do my best to make sure that I highlight when we check out different perspectives. I'm going to walk us through first the dashboard and the orientation of the platform because there's a lot of key hidden features right here at the very start. We'll walk through onboarding and how we maintain employee profiles. We'll check out time and attendance as well as payroll options, even mobile capabilities, which is how many of the employees who are on Paycor, including ourselves here at Paycor, um, often view our own information. 
So what's important here, the blue background with the white widgets is going to be the same for everyone. Everyone, no matter what their access level, is also going to have the sidebar navigation with quick and easy search capabilities so you can navigate around Paycor with ease. Each person is going to have shortcuts at the top to see their own information. So while this point of view, Michael Banks, a company administrator, is an admin, he is also an employee for this company. So this is his profile summary, task, pay stubs, and W-2s at the top. He is a leader, so he can manage people, and he can customize this homepage to prioritize the widgets that he wants to the top of the screen or the bottom or even eliminate them if he doesn't want to see it. We also have resources up here in the top right, again, accessible to everybody, whether that's reading, reaching out and chatting our support team for an employee-based item, manager-based item, or customizable access level-based item, or help sections and help guides. Michael here can see a couple additional things. So he can see the contact us button where he can take a deep dive in and reach out to our support team. Whether you call or chat in, you're going to get a live human, not a robot, in 10 to 30 seconds. We have a 90% first call resolution rate. So it's really important to us that we're knocking those questions out for you on the first call. But we have an easy to navigate case portal from our support center, which you'll find up here under the question mark. And this case portal is going to show you all the open pending cases that you have, you, who you're working on with that, so you can see and navigate through support with ease. This also is a training hub. So if someone new joins your organization, then we'll be able to set up a learning path so they can learn how to operate within Paycor. We also provide things like you're in microsites so you can close your books out with ease. We let you know when product updates are on the roadmap as a lot of our product is enhanced based on your feedback, which you can provide up here under this little exclamation point. That is also a section where you can find step-by-step -step screenshots and instructions for just about anything in Paycor if you're more of a do-it-yourself type. We also have a built-in chat feature. Our clients have asked us many times for alternative ways to communicate. So we provided both the engage down here and a direct chat. So this allows you to reach out to individual employees in the organization. You can create departments or channels, and you can also reach out to our support team from here and chat. Instead of an instant or direct message approach, we also have the engage feed. This is very helpful when you think about different resources your organization might have, maybe pinning or linking to your website or a 401k or 403b provider, maybe looking at um, things like Welcome to the Employee Portal or Company Picnic or other events that want to be broadcasted to everybody. This is visible via mobile and desktop and allows this to be communicated um, alternatively. This is also really great for things like inclement weather uh, warnings. We're going to spend time in a lot of these different widgets today, but a couple other ones to highlight are the My Team section. If you lead people, you can have uh, direct access to all those different individuals here, seeing things like time off requests, birthday and anniversaries, and other things of importance like time card corrections. We also have the ability to provide you leadership insights. And so if we go to check this out, this is going to take us to a dashboard to help us coach our team, lead people with um, stronger initiatives based on data. That data is going to be pulled from a number of different places. So these indexes up at the top come from different surveys that we can launch. Paths is helping guide our team to learn better soft skills and leadership skills. So how to manage reactions in a tough situation, how to lead remotely, among many other soft skill courses. Outside of the key metrics up at the top, we've got things like recognizing people for a job well done. Thank you for the help that you've provided me. We also have things like making sure we're sitting down with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's just as a regular connect basis or ongoing to help coach somebody through a difficult situation. We also have things like the time off to make sure people are taking that when they need it and other key metrics related to role. It's broken down by person on team uh, on the right-hand side here. If you have questions, fire them down there in the chat below. But from this point, we're going to go ahead and navigate into our onboarding tool. So here to launch a new hire event, we will simply navigate over to manage people. This is going to take us to our roster of employees. And so here we can see a number of different people within the organization. When I click on the new hire button here on the side, we can bring on people one at a time or in multiples, saving you time and effort as you onboard people. 
This allows us to then launch out specific packets of information. If they're 1099 contract workers or W-4s, we'll simply type in their key contact information. So like we are doing right here with me, we'll type this in. And if you ever needed recruiting needs, our recruiting tool will push this information right over. We then assign their work location and it kicks off packets. These are customizable to your organization. So whatever different groups um, you can have, um, you can set up a different packet. So if you need to collect and get documentation for certain policies or certain um, items for that specific group, you can create whatever group, however many groups you'd like, and then that will generate a packet of information like these here. We also can do accommodation documents. So if there's something specific for an individual you're onboarding, you can always upload that file here. Finally, we can roll out a task list so that everybody in the organization who needs to help bring this person on board with ease can do so. So we'll create a task list. This will allow us to say, hey, IT, prep a computer. Hey, HR, let's make a badge. And hey, manager, let's prep for an orientation. Whatever needs to be done by a certain date, by a specific individual can be set up as a task. And we can even do one-off custom tasks here before we send that information out to the new hire. At this point, we're going to change perspectives. You should see Welcome Carrie Smith popping up on your screen. Carrie here is an example new hire. And so when you think about the onboarding experience, we want to make this as easy as possible for both you as staff, but also for employees to onboard. And so here what we're doing is asking for them to fill out their information where they know it best, personal and contact, tax needs and requirements, as well as things like direct deposit or policy signing. Here we can customize this landing page so it can be whatever you'd like it to be. Here I have included the logo. We also have an embedded PayCore video as an example, but pictures, videos, and logos can be used here where they can then navigate down the side or navigate by the blue buttons like I did. There are multilingual capabilities at the top should you need it. And we also have the ability to collect both compliant and non-compliant information. The DEI initiatives mentioned can be captured here down at the bottom. And as we navigate through and forward, we can go through and fill out different items. If we find that a pager is just a paperweight these days, we don't have to include that field. Again, included, excluded, required, or optional. Emergency contacts, more than one. We have a tax credit screening for WOTC credits if that's ever determined necessary. We also have the I-9 section where we can go through and it will pull the personal and contact information the employees filled out. We want to save you redundant entry as well as your employees. So wherever we can parse information through the system, we'll do so. The I-9 section here allows us to choose our citizenship. And based on that selection, they might have a couple different questions to um, answer, but it will populate on the actual I-9 form here. This is the most new and up-to-date one that just launched and was due by the end of October, but you can see the form fills out with the information where we didn't have to type anything in, and here we'll capture the list A, B, and C documents, or we can help provide a delegate to capture that information for you. The direct deposit captures next. Here at Paycor, we have multiple pay options. So if you still have checks or if you need pay cards or any combination of direct deposit pay cards and checks, we can make that happen for you. But this is what it would look like for us to go through and navigate the direct deposit. Tax setup comes next, and if you're like me, this can get a little bit confusing, and oftentimes it's not always at our best interest to guide an employee through the different tax preferences they might personally need. Well, this wizard helps us go through the federal and state taxes. It also will help generate unemployment and local taxes on the back end. Based on the address entered under contact information, Carrie Smith is an Ohio resident. We will choose our language. It has hyperlinks throughout for guidance. We'll navigate through that federal W-4 first. There's clauses at the bottom that help us understand better what we're answering when we say, are you a non-resident alien? What about your exemption status or filing status? We can see if you have more than one job or married joint filing requirements by choosing B or C. And we also can see dependent claims and what constitutes a dependent. 
At this point, the income and deduction workbook generates allowing us to fill it in. But once we complete this section, this allows us to fill out the form accurately. Zeros and ones on the right lines, and it also creates your payroll data fields, so you don't need to do that in the end. This document will store on the employee's profile indefinitely, so you have that record electronically from anywhere you can access the internet. After this point, we have the state generating next. So here we'll go through the Ohio withholdings, capturing public schools based on that address and exemption status. And if anybody tries to skip forward or tries to leave before they've completed what they need to, it will say, hey, you got to fill out this field, but then it will also politely and well-manneredly say thank you. After this point, it fills out on the form, just like federal, verifying and submitting, storing on the employee's profile and creating those tax data fields. Additional information is an excellent catch-all. Anything you can type in, select from a pick list dropdown like a shirt size, or upload can be captured here. Now, these are only three example fields, but you can have as many as you like because Paycor is a cloud-based system allowing us to store and not really have storage limits to our different file components. These are also reportable custom fields after the fact. And finally, based on that document packet we selected when we launched this out to the new hire, they will adopt and scribble in their signature. And as they go through their stack of documents and policies for your organization, it will time date and stamp at the bottom of every single page with an IP address so that you are compliant in all 50 states. The employee will then review their documents and submit this forward. It will send a lovely reminder and email them the documents and things they've already signed, but you're always gonna be able to access this and so will they from their employee profile. So at this point, it takes us back to our guy, Michael Banks, our company administrator view, where here we're gonna have a widget called onboarding. We can see all the different progresses along the way, like Nick Lachey has not opened his invitation, but was supposed to start a couple days ago. When we manage these new hires, this allows us to really walk through and see some important things, filling out and closing the gaps. So not only can we see the progress that people are in, but if we take a look at Gina here, who's basically complete and just needs to be officially hired, we can see the couple fields left that we'll fill out as administrators. Things like position information, who's the manager, what's their work location, what pay group are they in, We'll fill out the list A, B, and C documents for the I-9 here or delegate someone to do so. And the beauty is after you do this step, it can also push to E-Verify as well. We then have the compensation tab that we'll fill out to help cover that as well. And then work schedule, which can fill in things like clocking and punch methods for timekeeping, as well as things like PTO policies that are relevant for that employee and even schedules as needed. We'll then review we have an opportunity to download the employee's documents. And when we hit this hire button on the side, this kicks off and launches a series of next steps for us. This creates an employee profile, allows us to pay them on the next payroll, can launch a learning event for our learning management tool and even kick off a benefit open enrollment. So this is important at this step because this creates that lovely employee experience. At this point, this takes us back to Michael Banks, where we can see one of those employee profiles that we had. And so what's nice about this is that when we go back to this manage people section up at the top, we can see that roster of everybody within the company. So here we can search and filter along the side. We can find a terminated employee from five years ago that were audited on, but we can also see folks on leave as well as anybody who might have been um, terminated, the red dots versus orange versus green being active. When we dive into Connie and Connie's profile, this is going to show us her key information. So here's all the personal and contact information we filled out in onboarding. This also shows us the position information we filled out as an administrator and shortcuts to the most common things reviewed. Each drawer on the side keeps you compliant. It's mapped on the back end to make sure the file storage is ac adequately documented and mapped accordingly. Things like pay and tax documents, pay rates, taxes, and earnings. We have things like timekeeping and time off requests, scheduling needs. Under position, this is more of an HR drawer where we can see different documentation. We can leave notes for the employee or what assets we assign to them. 
We can put them on leave or terminate them here as well. And we can also see access to the I-9 documents that have been completed and even track certification and education levels. If safety incidents happen, we can notate those in here as well as coaching and discipline. And we have a performance suite that even can enhance this module as well as a benefits uh, drawer there that you can see if benefits is activated. But this employee profile is only one piece of our HR tool. It's made up of two other components, one of which is called the HR Support Center. This is a giant resource center that allows you to see the different compliant laws and legislations by state. It's also resources like employee handbook builders, and you can even connect to an HR pro if you need help and guidance. We also have a series of automation points. So we have task lists like you saw in onboarding. We also have um, reminders. So these are helpful when you think about certifications expiring or licensures or visas. This is also helpful for things like Megan approve your time card. Finally, we also have a series of workflows and these can be activated and turned on turn and turned off based on what's important. So if we want to allow employee self-service or manager self-service, workflows is where this happens. These different things can be activated. So if we say, hey, Megan, go update your employee direct deposit, we can simply click on that and find out who needs to approve this, who it needs to be notified about it, and we can set up those workflows so that these route to the right people to approve or notify as necessary. This can be done for a series of things from changing your name to changing your taxes. We also have manager workflows for things like leave of absence, position and pay changes, as well as termination workflows. From this point, I'm going to walk us back to our dashboard where we can talk about timekeeping. So PayCor has a number of different clocking methods from physical time clocks to mobile punching, kiosk punching on an iPad or on a desktop terminal. But this little punch clock is a great example of how one would punch. We can simply hit create punch and it can punch them in or punch them out. We can also allocate in more detail. So do we want to in or out? Do we need to transfer roles? Do we need to change departments or add any punch notes? And so this can allow us to simply clock in or out with ease from multiple different ways. Similarly, we have a time off module where we can go in here and request time off. Based on the different buckets of hours, it'll show starting and ending balances based on the different days that we select. It will then tell us what a full day is for that employee. We can add a note and we can go ahead and submit this request. When we do so, this allows us to go back to the employee's page. So as an administrator, here's an administrator view where we can see all of Michael's different pending time off requests. We can also, as an administrator or manager, see those different requests, approve or deny them from this page or from a calendar view page. When moving through, the different um, time components, really what happens is those punches that are collected and the PTO requests that are approved all land back on the Time Insights dashboard. This allows us to quickly see what's going on within the current pay period and if there's any corrections we need to address. This also can give us visibility to today, who's in and out, and what's going on for the week. From this view, this allows us to quickly and easily see all of those things. And so from here, if I click on today, I can see who's working and who's not, who's on lunch and who's on break. When it comes to the weekly standpoint, this is a nice gauge of maybe earning or approaching overtime. This is also important for the pay period when we look at our time cards and see what we need to clean up, either as a manager supervisor or um, as an administrator. Here we can see that Michael has some corrections. We can filter for critical versus non-critical corrections. And when we go in, we can look at the time card and help make these corrections to approve it. Critical exceptions mean somebody likely missed a punch, punched out of bounds with our geofencing capabilities. And when you click on the alert, it'll tell you what's going on. So in this case, we've got a mixed, missed punch. Here, I can acknowledge it. I can go ahead and add in that punch or that missing amount of time, and that can allow me to make the corrections on Michael's time card here. We can flip through our team's time cards up at the top. So next, we're looking at Phil Harvey's card, which looks good with no corrections, where I can simply come in here, approve the pay card, and submit. And we have multiple levels of this submission process. 
At this point, when all the time cards are cleaned up, that rolls us over into our payroll. Because Paycor is one unified system, one dashboard and platform, we don't have to push and pull information around the system. It automatically appears. So as we go ahead and navigate over to payroll, this allows us to lock our time cards and move in so that we can process with efficiency. And so one thing that's nice about Paycor is our payroll is live. It is non-batch based, meaning we don't have to lock this information in to a period of time. We can simply process as we need to um, with ease. We can look at multiple weeks. So if we wanna work on a Christmas bonus now, we can simply extend out two months, go to the week of Christmas and start processing that bonus here. When that payroll comes around, we'll add in the confirmed hours or roll over our salaried employees per pay, and then we'll be able to process that in the future. When we look at the payroll for today, this is weekly. We can also filter up at the top if we want to see just the weekly group versus the biweekly group. We also don't charge for additional pay runs. So if you need to do a one-off pay run or a final check, it's easy to do so here. When we hit begin, this begins our processing. With Paycor time highlighted, we just simply hit the word import, but it's not actually importing anything. It's simply grabbing what's been locked and approved and confirmed on the time dashboard. Here, it then populates to the corresponding earning codes, which is how our payroll operates. The grid is customizable, allowing us to format to see the different fields that we need. So if we don't need to see overtime, we can simply deselect that section, hit save, and reprioritize these different needs. So if we wanted to pull PTO over here, we can do that. You can see everybody included on this payroll, including Brian Anderson, who's on leave with pay versus everybody with a green dot who's active. We can add in the line item. We can also add in a manual check or custom void. We can include pay stub messages like don't forget the company picnic this weekend. And we can also gross up individual checks. So if I want to give Ron a bonus here of $100, I can gross this check up hit gross up current check, desired amount, and go ahead and process this check where it'll recalculate this bonus for him. We can also make um, employee edits. So a great example of this is changing this benefit deduction from 75 to $100. In our system, all we do is simply click on that employee's name, head to deductions, and we can either manually key over this field like I'm gonna do here, and this will be effective for just this payroll. We can also head to the employee profile from here and make an effective date change, meaning we'll say from today's date, 1114, we set this new cost at $100. And when we hit save from this payroll forward, that change will be effective. At this point, we have everything in here that we're looking for. If we want to review an employee's pay, we simply click on their name, see their different earnings they have this pay period, see their deductions, their taxes. We can even see different accruals that are set up for personal and vacation, and we can recalculate that gross to net at any time. But if everything looks good and we've pulled in and processed or added things to the payroll, even via import, if you need to import a flat file of something, when we hit review pay run, a series of stop gaps are going to pop up to make sure that we're processing this correctly. Currently, Brian Anderson's not being paid. Maybe that's okay. Currently, he's on leave, so we're going to mark him as no pay. But if this was a mistake, we just caught it. This also works for things like employee minimum wage, if there's different minimum wages in the area, like it is for this case for this Los Angeles employee. This can be retro pays, shortfalls, balances or accruals and arrears, anything like that that could potentially put us out of payroll compliance. At this point, this is gonna generate our screen of checks and balances where we haven't even finished finalizing processing payroll, but we get all of the reports and data we need to make sure that we've done this correctly. Here, first, we've got a variance report where we can pick a comparable payroll, in this case, one six of 23, where we compare all of the different numbers to this specific payroll. That way, if there's anything wrong specific to an employee, we can see that here. We also can see that boo-boo, that, that employees that, that, that is not being paid. We can see liability summaries for employee and employer taxes, as well as the ability to see different gross earnings or deductions, like the dental here that we can export out.
we've got the ability to go through a number of reports like this pre-post journal, broken down by employee and department even if we want, where it allows us to go ahead and generate a report for checking. So here we have Connie Allen, her regular rates of pay, her taxes, deductions, and net pay into direct deposit. At the bottom, we've got roll-up totals for both the company as well as the employee and earnings. This also has an Excel version if you prefer it, as, long, as well as a number of different reports that could be helpful for um, confirming your payroll. But once everything looks good, we can simply hit approve pay run. If we need somebody else to put eyes on this before we finalize, we can also have a two-step approval process. From here, all of these reports are going to generate into our payroll reporting section. So here we can see the word reports and payroll reports is where those will go to live, where we can run those anytime, as well as different tax reports we might need. But we also have two different reporting suites, custom report builder and analytics. With this section, this allows us to see a number of favorited reports, which usually come from our standard templates. Over the 32 years we've been in business here at Paycor, we've been asked for a lot of different types of reports from 401k audits to earnings, EEOC information, as well as other things like OSHA and time broken down into labor allocations. But if we don't have a report in here that you're looking for, don't sweat it. We can either customize an existing template if it's close, or we can build a brand new template from scratch. And it's easy to do both. Here, I'm gonna show you expiring certifications. If this was a brand new report from scratch, we would simply name it and we would choose the bucket of information that we were looking for. We then can go to columns and add in the fields that we're looking for. So in this case, if I go to add column and I want to add a name, I simply hit the word name, enter, and it populates all the name fields that I could possibly pull into this report. If you're not sure what you want, you can open up these drawers and it'll show you all the different data fields that could possibly be pulled into this report. At this point, we can filter the information, sort it by department. We could format it so we can make it Comic Sans and Pink if we wanted to. We can choose our output style, which we have a lot of different variety here from multiple versions of Excel to CSV and PDF. We can share it when we run it, and we can also schedule these reports out so you can have it be set it and forget it going to the right people that need to be involved. You simply add in the email addresses separated by semicolon. You choose what you want that email line and what format you want this report to go over. And then on the first of the month, every month, this report would show up in everybody's inbox. Anything you customize, anything you build from scratch, anything that you set on a schedule will live under my report. So it's really easy to find it again, share it again, and not have to reinvent the wheel when you do so. This is a great suite when you think about granular reporting needs, but what about the needs of strategy? Here, the analytical suite is going to be where you'll live. And so this is important because we build out this homepage to fit your industry needs. Search is a really great way to find certain metrics. So if I wanted to understand turnover, for instance, I can simply type that in, click on metrics, and here's all the different metrics related to turnover. But really, guidebooks are the best way to navigate through our analytic tool. Whether you want to look at benchmarking against like organizations, whether you want to look at your workforce for things like overtime or absenteeism, you can simply click on these different pieces like overtime. You can set your different time span. Maybe we want to look over quarters. And then we can go ahead and be prompted by questions. So understanding high levels of overtime and what determines that, here's the total number of hours for each month as we look back year over year. What's the trends and so forth? What are similar questions and dive down a rabbit hole. When these different things resonate, we can take captures of this information. This capture will live over here under captures so that we can build out an analysis as a team. For instance, this Kenley turnover story was a client I had in May to June of 2020. We noticed trends in their voluntary turnover under a specific manager in a specific department. Here, when you click on these charts and graphs, go to insights and look at details, this will show you your granular data. So here's all the people who left the organization within this time period. And it'll tell us what their key information is, as well as if they were voluntary or involuntary turnover. 
We also have the ability to flip this into a uh, shared multiple format. So we can make it a presentation and talk about it in real time in a meeting. Hover over the interactive charts and graphs and click on it further to view details. Or we can export it out and push this into an Excel format or email it or link it to somebody else. By clicking the logo at the top, that takes you back to the home page every time, where really we're going to wrap up with the employee experience here on mobile. So when we think about the mobile experience, you're going to see a giant cell phone popping up on your screen here in a moment. And this is really how most people navigate Paycor. And so we can see here the Paycor app is opening up and it's going to pop us to the employee baseline level. Now, one beautiful thing about Paycor's mobile experience is based on your access level, this will generate different viewpoints. So a manager will be able to approve time cards or approve PTO from the mobile app. An administrator might be able to recruit or run a payroll. But what's important is that based on the tools and assortments that you utilize with Paycor, you can see different things here. For instance, Michelle is an employee who has the ability to cl clock in and out on her mobile phone. If you didn't want the employee to do that, you wouldn't see this section. They could only see their time card. There's a scheduling tool that with Paycor, if you ever needed it, they can each see their pay stubs and their, and their tax documents. And so if you click on the pay stub, it'll show you the breakdown, even time off earned, and they can look at a PDF version of this as well. This is really helpful if you think about sending a couple example pay stubs when you try and get a mortgage or if you need a loan or if you buy a car. When it's tax season, it's easy to come in here and not only change our withholdings, but see the different W-2s and send it out in the same way to a CPA or tax provider. We've got an earned wage access module that allows access to expenses ahead of time if you want to allow it. We have an actual expense module which allows us to submit expenses and pay them out through payroll or audit a business card if necessary. We have the time off request, which similar to the desktop experience allows us to request time off or approve it as a manager view. The engaged news feed from the dashboard where we could put things like inclement weather warnings comes back here and is also a widget down here. So you can see when those new posts pop up. We also have the ability to recognize people from a shortcut on the mobile phone. We can take learning and trainings or enroll in benefits. We can view the documents and policies we signed in onboarding and any new tasks or workflows will be notified here as well as the bell at the top. We also have the ability to chat from mobile because this is like an instant message component. It can even send a push notification in place of a text message. And finally, if we need to change our own information at any point, we can come in here and head to our own profile and make changes to our name, our headshot, our contact or emergency contact information as well. So Paycor is a robust tool that really allows us a lot of different options to customize this to fit your different needs as organizations. We wanna make sure it's convenient for you and your staff to go through and navigate Paycor for your employees to access their critical information um, so that you can work better together as a team, focusing on those other initiatives that are so, so important, especially in the ministry space. I hope you all enjoyed the webinar today. I'm gonna to kick it back to the team to close out. Thank you, Megan. Appreciate that. I wanted to just pause. I don't see any questions in the Q&A chat feature. Um, if anybody has any um, while we wrap, please feel free to throw them in. Or if you want, you can raise your hand as well and I can take you off mute if you have any questions for us. Um, just a reminder, I will provide the link out to the group um, after we drop today. Uh, I will also include the slides that I reviewed uh, with the groups. So you'll have my contact information as well as Rob's, uh, and you're welcome to contact us for any more information that you'd like, um, and I'd love to connect with each of you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and I did just want to throw this out as well. Um, we had green light from our team um, over here at PCOR. If anybody is interested in um, getting onboarded with a new software like PCOR uh, for a clean slate starting in January, uh, we actually had the green light from our team um, that we are able to do that. Um, a lot of times as we approach year end, um, it can be a little bit 
um, difficult for us to promise a 1-1 go live. Uh, however, we do have the bandwidth in place to be able to do that. And um, so we're happy to continue discussions if anybody's interested in uh, having a fresh start for the new year. And I don't see any questions. So we will go ahead and give everybody some time back and appreciate everybody joining today and be on the lookout for the information after the call. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Take care, everyone. Thank you.